My name is Kathleen. Thank you for watching Pray Like a Girl. In this video, we're going to lay out the simple steps to becoming the coolest person in the entire universe. The first step to becoming a saint is to die. So, we talk a lot on this channel about saints. Um, we're a little bit obsessed with them. We, myself, and Cameron want to be saints. When I was a small child, I did not want to be a saint. All the stories went along something like this. So-and-so was a nice child and they believed in God and loved him very much and then they're beheaded because they loved him. Like, oh my gosh, like I don't want to be a saint. That sounds terrific. I'm going to talk about the sainthood that's not necessarily martyrdom. A saint is any person who's in heaven for the rest of eternity. Do you want to go to heaven? I want to go to heaven. Therefore, we want to be saints, right? So today we're going to talk about the canonization process and the steps it takes to become saints. The church declares saints because God loves us, right? Because God has given us the grace to be in heaven with him forever. And the church wants to affirm that love of God and he wants to celebrate it. And so by naming people that we knew, human beings that walked on this earth and said, look, so-and-so did it, you can do it too. It gives us someone to look up to. It gives us role models to say, look at all these different walks of life, these different ways people lived, and they're all in heaven. So saints are canonized and recognized by the church as kind of role models for the rest of us to get to heaven. How we can be saints is live holy lives in accordance with the will of God. But how you can be canonized a saint well, that starts at death. Every stage of the canonization process, you get a title. So upon your death, the, your first title is Hero of Virtue. You have to be dead for a solid five years, and then we can start talking about making you a saint. Five years is kind of just like a breathing room. It allows the family to grieve before everyone is digging in through their business to find out about this holy man or woman of God. Um, but that's just kind of the standard. Now the Pope or Bishop can adjust that time. John Paul II, for example, we didn't wait five years after he died to bring up his cause for canonization. After five years, if someone still thinks that you deserve to be canonized a saint, that person is called the petitioner. And they go to the bishop and petition the bishop to open your cause for canonization. The person says, this is why so-and-so should be considered for sainthood. And the bishop goes, I approve. When the bishop is on your side, he'll go to Rome and say, you know, Joe here wants to open up a cause for canonization. Can he do it? And the Pope is like, okay. The bishop gets an okay from Rome and then he forms a tribunal. And as soon as the tribunal is formed, you are declared a servant of God. That means the bishop has approved people to actively search about your life. And this is the part where all of your dirt comes out. All of your good things, all of your bad things, all of your articles you've written, maybe homework assign assignments that you've done, blogs you've published, old tweets, you know, things people have written about you. They're going to conduct interviews with people you knew. All of the information, they're going to try to find everything they can about you as a person that's lived on this earth. And if you, it's, there's bad things, that's okay. We are all sinners. Every single one of us was born with original sin, and so not one of us has lived a flawless life. But the important thing is, it was in the past, right? We are supposed to be living every single day to get, distance ourselves farther from that sin that we've committed and to try never to do it again. The tribunals gathered all this information. They package it all up in this big box or whatever, probably a bunch of documents. They put it all together and then they send it to Rome. And your case will be assigned to a postulator. And that person is going to take the whole bucket load of stuff about your life and organize it, put it all into one legible document, and that's going to be called the Positio. I hope I pronounced that right. The, your book will go through nine different theologians. Not just one, not just two, nine. Nine people will read this book from cover to cover with the whole story of your life, and they're theologians. They're very trained in theology, in what is of God. They read your book, and once they read through it, all nine of them confer, and they say yay or nay. And if you've lived a holy life that is worthy of heaven, they're going to say, yay, this person is good to go for canonization. And then you move on to your next step, which is review from the Pope. The theologians will then go make their case to the Pope and say, we read this book. This person lived a very holy life. Would you like to consider them to be a canonized saint in the Catholic Church? The Pope approves you, says you're good, you're going to be named venerable. If you were martyred for your faith, you skip the venerable stage. You go straight up to the next one. But for the sake of education, 
we're going to go through all the steps. Now, venerable means you are now waiting for a miracle. People can pray to you, even though they don't know you're in heaven yet, they'll pray to you for your intercession. And if something miraculous happens because of your intercession, they'll bring it to their, their bishop and the bishop will then bring it to Rome. And then once that is approved, they're not just gonna say, oh, they won the lottery ticket because of you. <laughs> they're a saint. No, there's a rigorous process that makes sure the miracle is miraculous and of God. And once it's approved, you level up and you become a blessed. So you are beatified is the name of that stage. Also, another thing that happens when a person is beatified is their body is exhumed. It's brought up and it can be venerated. Um, it can be seen by other people and people can come and touch it and um, pray kind of like in the Bible when that woman touched the robe of Jesus and she was healed. People will go do that to the bodies of the saints. Now when you're at the blessed stage, this is the, oh my gosh, we're so close to the finish line, but also can take a very long time because in order to move from blessed to saint, you need another miracle, but not just any miracle. It's a miracle that has to have occurred after you were beatified. Great, a miracle happens. It's been approved by the priest and the bishops that are assigned to the case. And then it has been approved by the Pope and bam. The Pope will set a date and announce your canonization and you have achieved the highest achievement there is. You get to spend eternity with God. A saint, the ultimate glory, the ultimate reward. So let's do everything we can in the one part of this that we have control of the part where we're alive which is right now so do everything you can right now so that way when you die you can get on this fast track and become a saint and in heaven forever with your creator oh and also subscribe that would be cool